I'm told that you are a bit of a perfectionist to the degree that at Ohio State, you would send some uh, cards for practice back with all kinds of red correction marks on them. Um, can you tell me about that story and maybe uh, other examples of your perfectionism? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, if you're going to do something, you might as well do it right. So, I mean, I want to be detailed. We ask these players to be detailed in everything they do. Um, I mean, that's the expectation across the board, not only for our guys, but for the coaches um, all the way down. Um, so if you're going to do anything, you better, better do it how you want it and uh, live up to that expectation level with everything. Because how you do, I got a saying, how you do anything is how you do everything. So um, it's kind of what I live by. and I'm not going to lose sight of all the little things. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Teresa? Shane, how has it been now calling the plays? You had the uh, session on the uh, Friday at the stadium. I saw you doing it some today. Are you getting more comfortable with that? And, and how is that working through that whole process now that you got three weeks before the opener? Yeah, I mean, uh, Friday I called it at the stadium. Um, I mean, we had a plan going in, though, as a defensive staff, kind of what we want to work on. And with every play call, there's obviously a bunch of situations that come up throughout the game. Who's in the game for them? What's the down and distance, all that type of stuff. And uh, I mean, we go through it pretty thoroughly as a defensive staff, collaborate, collaboratively, um, with kind of what we're looking for, what we want, what we want run. Um, so I mean, that's been good for me just in terms of that. And then really at practice right now, other than <clears throat> other than Friday, everything's pretty much been scripted. So we go through that, Braves, myself, the defensive staff, it's the same kind of premise of what we want to see that day. Um, and really I'm just the relay man in terms of getting into those guys right now. Hey, Coach, we had one request. If you could tilt your camera down a little bit, we're only getting half your face on the feed that we're doing. Um, John Glennon? Uh -huh. There we go. All right. Hey, Shane. Um, I hope you just didn't answer this. My, uh, my audio is not great. Uh, I'm wondering on, on Friday, um, how much of the, uh, the, the point calling uh, that you did in, in sort of that unscripted session, um, you know, how that worked, whether that was Mike telling you to call what plays or whether that was you calling the plays or, or was there a mix of that? How did, how did that work? Yeah, we, uh, I mean, we went into that thing with a plan of what we wanted called. And like I mentioned, just the personnel that we see who's in the game, the different situations, like we meet as a staff thoroughly about kind of what we want called in certain situations. So there's a plan played out or laid out for me. Um, and I called it on Friday. Mike had to do all the situations, the spotting the ball and everything else. He had a bunch of other stuff to kind of handle to make that make sure that thing could operate. Um, but we had a plan in place, and I, I was the man calling it into Rashawn and, and Jay on. But at the same time, like, there's only so many calls for each situation, especially right now with, with what we're doing install-wise, what we want to get ran. Did you find, I mean, um, did you enjoy the experience? Is that kind of a, still a step forward uh, for you in that, in that regard? And, and how do you think that you, you felt? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I mean, I felt, I felt comfortable up there doing it. Um, I mean, I've done it before in practice at times in a couple of preseason games. So I've had experience doing it. But, uh, I mean, anytime, anytime uh, you take on a somewhat of a, a new role in a in a in that situation where I've just been next to Dean or doing the personnel or whatever it might be, like it's just, it's just something something a little bit new for me. But I mean, I felt comfortable. Again, I got a, a there's a great defensive staff here in terms of our collaboration and our plan and what we're trying to get accomplished. Um, so going in, and there's great guys to kind of lean off of. Obviously, Jim's done it a really long time too. So I mean, just it was good. It was good. Hey, go, Claire. Shane, I'm curious, does the role you guys envision for Vic Beasley make it any easier or harder for him to make up the time he's missed? And, and are we at sort of a, a critical point on the calendar with him yet? Yeah, I think um, as he gets back, it's just going to be, be really how much he can handle. You know, like it, I think it would be unfair of us to say, here's the entire defense go out there and execute it. I mean, we got to kind of pick and choose where we're going to need him and where we need to emphasize kind of his, his progress in terms of learning early on um, and then kind of see where it goes. But 
I mean, I don't think it would be fair to him to say, hey, here's everything we do. Like, you've got to know it all and go execute it. We're going to have to kind of protect him and massage him into it a little bit. Uh, Teron? Yeah, getting back to the collaboration side of things, uh, how big is having a guy like, like Coach Hazlitt there? And, you know, what does his experience, like what value does that bring to you as a guy who's going to be calling some plays? Yeah, that's great. Just like um, – I mean, just like Dean last year, those guys have seen it all. I mean, from all ends of the spectrum, the good, the bad, um, they got different ways of doing pretty much everything. Um, so just being able to bounce ideas off him, all those different little things that come into it, situational stuff that comes into play. Um, I mean, it's, it's always good to have somebody you can turn to that's kind of experienced it, whether it's good or bad, uh, to give some insight. Uh, Jim? Shane, on Vic, what, what are some things you can do with him now where you can make sure he's as up to speed as possible um, when he is ready to go physically? What are some things you've been doing with him? Yeah, I mean, we've been meeting. He's in all the meetings. Um, I mean, we're not losing sight, obviously, in the training room, first and foremost, to make sure he's getting getting where he needs to be. Um, but he's been in all the meetings. We've, we've had extra time with him just during special teams meetings. We steal that that time too um so there's been some a lot of opportunities to kind of go through that uh put things up in some form or fashion create a a version of a walkthrough in our meeting room with them so to speak so i mean we're trying to be creative um to where you can actually see it and line up rather than just looking at a piece of paper but uh i mean he's learning i feel like he's getting more comfortable with what what we're asking of those guys uh terry Shane, how much prior experience at previous stops in your coaching career have you been involved in calling the plays? And uh, in in those stops, uh, you know, what kind of things did you take away from it maybe that you can apply here? Yeah, I mean, I've, it's always been involved, obviously, in the game planning aspect in terms of what I said earlier with the situations, what calls we like in certain situations against different different personnel groups, all of that. Um, I mean, in terms of calling the plays, I've done a little bit here and there at Kennesaw State, same type of situation, um, really just with with practices, scrimmages, some of that type of stuff going on there. Um, I think the main thing, and we'll see where this thing goes, like, I mean, I'm not dead set on calling plays, just so you guys know. Like, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. We're working through it, me and Mike and everybody. Um, and I think I think the main thing is just being comfortable and being able to get in a routine and just staying ahead of the game with it um, as it goes. Uh, Paul? was watching um, DeAndre Walker yesterday. He was mostly in two-point, Shane, but then he uh, – a couple times went into four point. I was wondering if you could talk through what you ask of, of the guys that jump to the line as outside linebackers from, from uh, two point to three point to four point. What, what do you ask of them? What do they get out of those three? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, there's a comfort level with a lot of these guys. They've been in a three point probably throughout their college career. Then we're coming in here and we're asking them to stand up. Um, I mean, a lot of things go into that. It's comfort level, it's the defense, it's what they're going to be asked to do on certain plays comes into play. Um, but ultimately, like if, if they want to get down a three point, it's more comfortable to them and they're able to execute the defense. Like I'm not opposed to it. It's more more or less a comfort level for those guys. And then ultimately third down, like it is what it is. They, they can get in their best stance to go right. But first, second down, just what we ask those guys to do in certain situations. Um, I mean, it is. They just got to make sure they have a good feel for being able to do their job and whatever they decide. Really appreciate it. Yep. Uh, Buck? Yeah, Coach, staying with Walker, he seems to be the beneficiary of those snaps without Vic and Correa available for the majority of camp at this point. Where have you seen him grow specifically? He said he's approaching every day like he's, he's still a rookie and he still has those moments. Um, where are you seeing him grow? Yeah, I think um, for him, I think his understanding of defense has improved dramatically. I think now it's more just the little nuances 
that he sees within every play, a certain split, a certain stance, some of those things. And ultimately for him, it's it's just the consistency with the technique. Like he's a big, strong kid, and he's, he's able to get away with some stuff that most guys aren't because he's got some lower body strength and some stuff to him. Um, and it's just really him realizing what it could potentially be if he's more consistent with technique um, at the point of attack play and then play out. But, I mean, I, I've been impressed with him overall. I think he's done a good job uh, executing the defense. Uh, he's getting valuable reps, like you said. I think he's improving. Uh, he's just got to keep going and be able to do it day in and day out and keep going, uh, keep finding one thing to get better at each day.